Hi, this is Don Brown, former Phillies outfielder, all-star, and also FTB coach. Welcome to Step Up Podcast. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Step Up Podcast. It's your host, Nelly, in the building. I'm over here with Ali. What's going on? I got my guest here, Dom Brown, Dominic, hey, a.k.a. Dominic. Legend, Philly's guy. You know how it is, all-star player. Welcome to be here, Dom. Man, I'm so happy to be here. You know, it's an honor. Kind of mad at Nelly for waiting so long to get me <laughs> on the podcast, but it's all good. I'm happy to be home. Man, I'm, and listen, listen, I'm happy for you to be home as well. Let's get into it. Now we in Florida. We're obviously here, close to an area you grew up in. Right. Um, let's talk to me about it, man. You're moving from Pasco to, to Georgia. Yes, sir. So I grew up in Pasco County, there until 16. Uh, huge football guy. Um, always loved baseball. Uh, dad worked at Disney um, until high school and then retired a little bit early, and uh, we moved to Atlanta. So. It's good to be back in good old Clearwater. Um, I got drafted by the Phillies, so I was here for 10 plus years. Um, and then now I make Philly my home. And and let's like, when, let's talk about the travel ball days, right? For sure. You, when you moved from Florida to Georgia, when did you start making your name? Because obviously you blew up late, right? Right, exactly. You blew up late, you were a football guy, you were doing your thing. Uh, Pasco County Baseball um, <laughs> at that time, you know, wasn't the elite of the league. I mean, Hernando County, I mean, sorry, Hillsborough County in Tampa was a very hot bed. So I knew with moving to Atlanta, you had Brandon Phillips went to the same yeah. high school as myself. Um, and I knew that I was going to be able to play with uh, East Cobb as well. So, so you talking about one of the biggest travel programs still now to this day. Yeah. Um, so it helped out tremendously. Um, I would definitely say uh, ninth to 10th grade. I remember us playing Ocala. I think they were like 27 and 0. I think that kind of put me on the map as a pitcher. Um, and then I tried out for the USA team and kind of made it to the last cut as a pitcher. Um, and then by the time I got home, uh, had a few letters and a couple of pro teams were looking at me. I end up, I, I was a big big kid, so that helped me out a lot being 6'5", six, 6'6", six, 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 yeah. six, yeah. right? Um, but I figured out the bat a little bit later on and uh, you know, now the rest is history. That's awesome. Were you a PG guy? Like when you were playing travel ball, was the baseball world anywhere near what it's like right now? Uh, I would have to say, I, I know that I went to some big, big PG events, but I know last year at Jupiter, I think it was 500 scouts or somewhere around yeah, there. Yeah. I mean, it was hard to get to the restroom. Um, I was fired up for that night game first. <laughs> Nelly's been telling me this for years, um, but I want to say it probably was 100 to 200 scouts. I think everything back then. 05, 06 was all invite only. Yeah. Um, I remember my first PG event. I think I started out like 0 for 7 or something. <laughs> and then I hit a bomb dead center. So I think that helped out too. That might have been that might have been a big point mm -hmm. um, with turning the scout's head around. Um, I've always had a live arm even as a kid. Um, but I definitely got the stick in the bat late. Um, but I always had that love for baseball. And I wanted to play every single day. Um, I didn't want to, you know, sit around and run and, and you know, be one of the weird guys, as we like to say the pitchers the are. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> I didn't want to did be a PR. How long did you play baseball and football? Like, how long did you play football? Uh, until my senior year. So, okay. so all of high school. And then um, Could have gone to Miami. You didn't yeah, about I had 60. <laughs> so, I had close to 60 offers by junior year, football-wise. I was a four-star recruit. Um, so, that definitely helped out a lot. I got football pretty fast. Uh, I wasn't afraid to get dirty, I must say. Um, I played wide receiver. I uh, probably would end up being a tight end or something. I think I'm 245 now. Mm. Um, but back then, I was running around a little bit, running some good routes, and I love to block. Like I said, I love to get dirty. But baseball, um, something that I always wanted to do naturally. I had that love for the game. Um, but that mental grind and beating, like I, I had to just play more baseball. I was really raw out of high school. Uh, definitely played a lot more basketball, you know, and, and football as well. No, it's just cool to hear that you were an athlete. Right. Like I feel like sometimes that sep like can separate a kid being coachable. Right. Like you can kind of notice a lot of these kids now are baseball, 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 baseball. Right. Right. Like you were a multi-sport athlete <clears throat> and successful at doing so. And like, right. Yeah, I, I got I got lucky. Um, <laughs> I, I definitely would say that. I definitely worked hard. I had good parents. Um, but I always say now, like it's easier. Now for the kids to drift away from the other sports because, you know, you can pay a guy to get speed and agility 
I think the cheapest way is to play the other sports. No offense to anybody. Um, but I know if I would have got that a little bit earlier, like it is now, like got, get some speed and agility, some one-on-one -on -one training. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen it with the academics as well. Like once I got that individual, you know, training aspect of it, you know, my grades and all those things enhanced totally. Um, and I think that's what kind of led me to teaching as well. Mm -hmm. Just because certain kids work well, you know, in a group environment, but others work really well you know, in an individual setting. Um, so it just all depends on, you know, who the guy is and what it's all about. But it's a totally different generation now. So would you say being an athlete, multiple, you know, I'm big on that, obviously. I mean, you say right. you're a coach and all that. I'm, right. You know, we draft athletes, right? Right. And would you say that helped you become number one? Because there was a point in perfect game, you were ranked number one. Right. You were that guy. Right, you right, know? right. So I think, does that, did I up your, your let's say what, your money-wise when you get drafted and all right. that, being a three-sport guy? Um. I think that for me, if we're talking about me yeah, personally, talking about you personally, I think that uh, not playing baseball and, and saying that I was all in kind of confused the scouts a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think that if I had one more year, because I went in the 20th round, obviously, mm -hmm. but um, in two years I was the number one prospect um, in baseball. So I think if I would have had, you know, maybe reclassing like how you're seeing some of the guys are now, um, that definitely would have helped me out with playing baseball. Um, but the, the other sports definitely helped out. I just want to say that the timing was just a little bit off with, with me. You know, the Phillies always would tell me that they got to steal, you yeah. know, and with a late round guy. Um, but it just all depends on each each individual kid. You know, that's kind of what led me to, like I said, another reason what led me to coaching is being able to steer these guys in the right areas because you see that, you know, a lot of guys, it's about a money grab. Yeah. For me, I actually love, we love what we do you no, know, on, on a consistent basis. Well, well, and now that you're in the coaching world, you know, you got into it now, you're training kids, you're you're starting to see what they need help is. And, and honestly, we're both on the field. We just left. Right. Um, Mental. Right. Mental is the game. You know, these right. kids are athletes. They're right. freaks. We got the best of the best. You're there. Right. It's the mental part. Right. Talk to me about it, man. Tell me what these kids need to do. Right. I, I think that um, I have um, some of the best of both worlds, you know, being one of the best players in the world, mm -hmm. but also struggling later on and in the beginning as well. Um, I'm definitely not a prima donna, but yeah. I've also experienced that side of it. Um, but the, definitely the, the most difficult part for these guys is just opening up and being vulnerable. I think for us too, as coaches, you, you always say that Nelly's one of the best you know, connectors in the world when it comes to you know, baseball because our coaches, that's what we're all about. But if we had one or two guys that wasn't open to that change, how are we going to be able to, to get a kid to run? We can't walk ourselves. 100%. You know what I mean? So. Um, you've done a good job with that. I mean, you've been telling me since I retired to get out here. All yeah. I wanted to do was just learn in the beginning. I didn't know what I did well or what I didn't. Now I do with getting yeah. out here. I think that I should have right away, like you said, I should have just jumped right into the fire um, because I didn't realize the knowledge that I had for the game. Yeah. Um, but now looking at it, I know I'm like, okay, well, you played, you know, 14 years of pro ball, six in the big leagues, parts of six in the big leagues. You got a lot of knowledge for these yeah. kids. And I just kind of went through the same things that these guys are going through now. Well, and that's the best part, right? You could relate. You failed. Right. You achieved. You hit right. goals. You went to an all-star player, then you right. failed again, and then you right. came back, and now you're giving, right? Right. These kids need to understand this is a game of failure. Right. Life's going to knock you down. You're going to either get back up and keep going. I agree. Or you're going to drag your feet and we're going to cry about it, right? I about spilled milk. We don't I do agree. that. You know? And I agree. Just today, you had a, a player you had to have a mental talk with. Right. You know? Right. That, that breakdown serious. That um that's special to me. I, I told you when um you know, we're not gonna mention any names no, on the no podcast, name. but um when I'm able to, you know, get a guy to talk to me in between innings, you know, I had to take a little inning off at first base just to be able to talk to him. You know, that meant the world to me. Yeah. That's what I'm here for. I mean, I like to think that we have some of the best coaches in the world that are that are here with us, but uh being able to give them that mental part, like I know that's something that I'm blessed to be able to do. Well, and the boys are so lucky to have you guys because, like, and correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like when you guys were in the game at their age, the whole mental thing wasn't preached you as much. It. It's like there's such an importance right now. Like, baseball is a numbers game. It's so right. mental for, like, a lot of these kids, like you're saying, to recognize if it's not carrying over from, like, what you're telling them in practice to right. when they're in a game. Like, it takes that vulnerability and, like, relationship then with the kid for them to even feel comfortable right. confiding in you to, like, make the change, you know? Right. No, 100%. I mean, that's the biggest reason why I'm out of the big leagues. I mean, I'm, I ran a 6'5", 60, I threw the ball 100, I hit the ball 100 plus. Um, but the Phillies gave me the keys to the vehicle, I like to say. And by that time, Utley and, you know, all those mm -hmm. guys were out. 
And, you know, I didn't know how to take that next step with being honest about how I felt. You know, I played hurt a lot, I was worried about the clubhouse a lot. Like I tried to do, you know, way too much when I had plenty of help. So for me now, if I can give these kids something that I didn't even have at 27, 28 years old, if they get it at 16 or 17, they're gonna be able to play this game stress-free. And that's what it's all about for me. If I can just be in the box with them at all times, even when I'm at first base, just take a peek down at Coach Dom. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to let you know if it's the right opportunity to go ahead and let it go and swing for the fences, which sometimes some of the kids need to do, Nelly, as I know, you know. I, I agree. I mean, I think with you know guys like you, and obviously you're seeing you know the, the knowledge of the game and these kids wanting to learn right. and giving them what we didn't have growing up, right. you know, the secret doors and keys and the shortcuts you can right. do and what do right. and what not to do, how right. to speak and how not to speak, you know, certain things like that. The transition for you as becoming a coach, was that a little difficult for you? Was it, was it tough not comparing yourself? It was really difficult because, like I said, I didn't know what I was good at. In baseball, like I knew that I was a 4-2, 5-2 guy, so I knew that I did everything pretty well. But coaching... Like, I didn't go to any media training. I did all that stuff as a player, but I didn't know how that was going to translate, you know, into coaching. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm blessed to be able to have you, bro. I mean, I was with another, you know, big organization with Arsenal, and I was able to see, you know, certain things, and they helped me out tremendously. I have my travel teams. Um, but being able to see it at the highest level mm -hmm. and see that, you know, I belong, you know, that was, that was one of the most important things last summer. Um, and then after the first tournament, when you called me, and West Palm, and you're yeah. like, man, the guys are missing you because I couldn't come out because I had the family. Mm -hmm. um, that lit me up because I know how I know how prideful you are as well, in a good way. Mm -hmm. um, everybody runs toward Nell runs towards Nelly, so you know to be able to get a little bit of credit from Coach Dom after the first tournament, I was really excited for the rest of the summer. I mean, you got first rounders. Hey, where's Dom? I need help with my hitting. Right. That's a, that's a right. compliment more than anything. Now right. you know you're, you're you were first rounder. You were a guy, right? A late round guy, whatever. Right. Number one at that time. You know, you know how hard it is as a pride to be like, I got you. I need help. Right. I need help. Help me with my swing. And they were looking for you. So it's hard. It's hard to impact some of these kids. They're they're not your average kids. Let's right. Just say that. I mean, this one is, percenters. This is the second day, and and as you know, as soon as I give my speech every year, like that's one of the first things that I talk about is you guys are gonna be in my back pocket. Yeah. I hope that I'm in your back pocket whenever you guys need something, whether that's a text. I'm always you know, one phone call away and to see the guys really open up to that right away last year, you know, speaks, you know, volumes. But now second year, guys are starting to talk. They know, you know, mm -hmm. that I'm a decent coach and, and guys know that it's all about the mental game with me. It's you know, trust. guys are opening up right you. away. Yes. That's not checkers, you said? That's not, it's not they're trying to trust you. Yeah, yeah. they trust you. Right, no, 100%. How did you two get connected in the coaching world? Like, what Ooh, was the transition for share, you from your coaching I can share, days to I can this share year? that. Go ahead. So, I, um, probably 2016, once I got sent down the last time, mm -hmm. um, I kind of transitioned to, you know, doing the lessons in the off season, mm -hmm. um, just trying to figure out what I was going to do after baseball. Um, COVID hit. Once COVID hit, I'm like, all right. Like, I just had two really good years in Mexico, made the all-star team both years there, um, but couldn't get back over here to a big league invite role. And I see, you know, FTB Nelly um, <laughs> commenting on some of my posts. And I'm like, he's like, so when you coming to coach, pretty much is what he was telling me. And I'm mm -hmm. like, dude, I, I have to, you know, figure out what you know, my time schedule is, and I need to figure out what I really want to do. Your identity first. at that time. Right, my identity is the perfect word. Um, and he stayed consistent. I mean, he would reach out, you know, every few months, and then I finally got to the point where I'm like, all right, it's been three years of me only being in the Northeast, and I'm like getting kind of bored of seeing the same kids over and over. Mm -hmm. um, and then I reached out to him, and I'm like, all right, let's let's do it. Like it's yeah, time for me give to it a shot one time, you know, right? go all in. Like it wasn't the experience of getting your own facility, which mm -hmm. most guys in my position do. Mm -hmm. Like I got under some guys that had a facility. Like I just needed to figure out exactly what I wanted to do, and he helped me out with that tremendously. It's just interesting you guys even use the term identity because that's I see it so much recently when I talk to guys. That's like when your world shifts and it's not baseball all the time kind of right. making the transition to like right. okay now what do I do with myself what do I yeah. and you guys almost can have this new love for the game from a different angle like you have a right. different passion for it it's well, cool. well it's like when you're growing up right you're looking That's at coaches they're old <laughs> you know you're like oh I don't want to be this old guy I'm be this <laughs> little coach. I've, I've, been, I've been blessed to have you know some good kids and you know also my wife 
uh, to have my back through this whole process. And, you know, when you got somebody that's, you the know, right, right, right in your back corner, you know, mm -hmm. she's always, you know, boosting me up and giving me confidence to do whatever is on my mind and on my heart. Um, and like I said, to be able to find that same consistent field with some really good coaches, mm -hmm. that's the hardest. That's the hardest part to find is just having the right teammates to share all of this with. Like I, I always tell people, my last couple of years in the big leagues, that was the biggest thing. The the, the players that we had in the in the clubhouse. No offense to anybody. Yeah. Um, they just were a little bit different than what I was used to with, with Chase and Jimmy and. You know all those guys that are close to being Hall of Famers, the veterans to the right. To, so guys are just getting roles right, and right. stuff, right? <laughs> exactly. So to be able to find consistent people um, after playing, like that's been a, that's been the biggest thing. So I appreciate you, Nelly. No, for no. sure. And I like, appreciate you. I, I always you. tell you that, but like I really do appreciate you and everything that you do. Um, I mean, from the podcast, you're always trying to you know create um, something new. Avenues, avenues, you know. Right. It's, 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 you know, and 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 I, and I, you know, you're my boy, and I appreciate you helping us out. And my thing is, it ain't even about me, man. It's about the kids and right. the fact that guys like us that could give back and help and guide some of these kids that don't have the knowledge or right. the, or the talks or no, we didn't have that. You right. Know, if we did, we'd be so plain. Right. You know, we wouldn't be here. So I just, for me, giving back is more bigger than anything. But minorities, man, and the minority thing is, is tough. So one hundred percent. Time to change the game. Baseball needs to change, and it's changing. No, I agree. It is. You see, it's changing. It's becoming well, look, more. These flashy. kids are the future. Yes. Yeah. You know, you're coaching the future of baseball. No, honey. Yeah, I mean, kids are getting seven million at school now. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Like even like when it comes to like you know. You know, wearing some of the drip, and yeah, yeah, pimping home runs, like all those things. If I pimped the home run in oh. 2014, <laughs> no, no, like I remember guys were like, they oh, might you're about to you get out. hit. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you about to get hit, dude. Yeah. Just do a bat flip, like, what's going on? And to see, <laughs> you know, ready. Jazz and some of the guys that we're close with now being mm -hmm. able to, you know, share, you know, their, their opinions. It loosens you up. All those things loosen me up in the box and make me play more relaxed. Mm -hmm. um, me and Howard used to bow at the end of a yeah. home run and celebrate. Like all those things kept me loose and relaxed. Um, so to see the kids being able to play the game free and easy now, like have fun. Right? It's uh, it's what it's all about. It's the key. Like playing out of that mode when the game's fun. It's like it's like little league. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. That's what it's supposed yeah. to be. When it's a job too early. You get over it. You don't want to go to work. Just, just like anything else, right. you know. Yeah. You, then they realize at the next level, they're not having fun in high school. Then they're really not gonna have fun at the next level. And then that, which they don't that, understand. <laughs> that. It's, it gets serious. Because I didn't, I didn't struggle with that until I got to the big leagues. Yeah. And I'm like, oh shoot, like how can I go back to that little league field like we were mm -hmm. just talking about? Mm -hmm. And sometimes calling home and getting the guy that you grew up with to come in and hang out and do yeah. all those things and share some of the things. Like that's what it's all about for me. You yeah. know what I mean? What was your time like in Mexico? Oh man, Mexico was unbelievable. It's definitely not what they tell us over here. <laughs> definitely not. It's yeah, definitely better. not what they tell, <laughs> tell us over here. I thought that it would be. Yeah. Um, I had Barry Enright. He's the uh, pitching coach right now with the Diamondbacks. Um, I was in AAA with the Rockies, and he said, "Dom, you, you might want to consider going to, to Mexico. Like everything's like big league over there. Um, I can put you, you know, on one of the best teams." Um, and then I got there and got to. Um, Sonora, which is uh, Hermosillo area, and uh, that was a it was a treat. It really was. Um, I ended up spending two years over there. You play winter and then you play in the summers, and uh, it was awesome. I honestly just got a little bit tired of traveling around. The kids are getting a little bit older now, um, but the experience over there was was unbelievable. I knew that it also was you know AAA. They would say um, pitching as well, so I knew that I still was getting really good reps. Yeah. Um, but it was time for me to, to move on and, and get to coaching, which I was super excited to do. Super nervous and scared in the beginning. <laughs> but uh, if, if I'm not feeling those BGs and that anxiety, mm. then, it's something, then it lets me know it's something that I love. And that's something that I chase every day. Like I get those same nerves that um, I had as a player, mm -hmm. as a coach now. So it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, see, I like that, man. And just everything you, you, you bring into the game. Listen, being a player coach is tough. That's what I am. That's why I tell people I try, I try not to be a coach. I try to be a player's guy. Right. And I want to be a mentor. I want these guys to call me for anything. And that's what you're becoming now. You're right. starting to realize they could come up to you. They're going to talk to you about the girls. They're going to talk right. to you about this and that. Just life. Baseball's right. life, you know? Right. And that's what we're here to do. We want these kids to talk to me after. I want them to come back jazz. All these kids Oof. come back to us because we coached them well. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think, I think you doing this and you becoming the player you was, to becoming the coach now, and I think right. you would be just successful because your resume is real. 
You know, right. eventually you're gonna move on. Eventually right. you're gonna want to do pro ball. You're gonna right. want to go to college. Right. You know, the good. So tell me, is that an end goal for you as a coach, or you want facilities? Man, I'm in the moment right now. Yeah. <laughs> so like honestly, my goals um, right now is to to get the facility stuff running. You know, up north. Um, a lot of guys that I coach now, it's been four or five years, so they're graduating college. Um, give those guys a home base. And a uh, perfect world for me is to be down here in Tampa doing the same things right now um, and then kind of have the facility up, up in the northeast. I mean, we're connecting in Atlanta yeah. right now as well, so I got a couple teams there under, you know, the FTB umbrella. Mm -hmm. Um, DB9, and, and shout out to DB9. Yes, sir. Um, shout out to FTB, right? <laughs> yeah. For making Big all FTB. this thing possible. But uh, we're starting to um, connect with the facilities up in Atlanta right now. Um, we sh I guess we shouldn't be talking about that, but yeah, we can. It's all good. Right? This video don't drop till later. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. cool. Yeah. Nah, so we're connecting in Atlanta right now, me and Nelly and uh, a couple others. So we're really looking forward to that as well. But that's, that's my goals right now. It's not to take over. Um, it's just to, you know, be consistent and give guys opportunities um, job-wise, uh, coaching-wise that, you know, I, I, I didn't have. Yeah. As a father, um, what do you think is, like, a personal goal for you as you – and I don't know if your son plays or not. Right, of, yeah. But, like, what is something that when you look at your kid, not you necessarily do different, but a goal as a dad for, like, if he pursues baseball or whatever sport, kind of right. something that you're trying to put into his mental. Yeah, no, 100%. Like, I just want him to be the best version of him as possible, whatever that sport may be. Um, in the baseball realm, I just want to give him every opportunity to, if he want to make it to the big leagues, you can. Mm -hmm. But it ain't even that serious to me. I'm just happy that he's playing baseball. Um, I mean, he's a lefty. The little one, six years old, he plays baseball. Yep. Um, that's what it's all about for me is just giving it, giving my kid something that I didn't have. I mean, I can call, you know, pretty much almost every college coach it is in the country and, you know, every travel ball organization it is in the country. We happen to be, you know, one of the biggest ourselves. So to be able to set that up for them and have some coaches around them that I could really trust and keep eyes on, that's what it's about for me because I don't want to coach them. Yeah. Like, I, I want to coach them in the cage a little bit, but I want to let other guys coach them um, and honestly, like there, he, those guys, are, my oldest son, you know, he, he has to put in some work, you know what I mean? He has the talent, but you know, he has to put in that work and I want to see those other coaches like give him, you know, that hard nose that I got when I, when mm -hmm. I grew up in, and we have that in FTB. So I'm just really looking forward to him being the best version of himself that he possibly could be. If that's baseball or basketball or mm -hmm. football, it really doesn't matter to me. Mm -hmm. You got to play something though. <laughs> you I was gonna say arts something. and crafts. Like right, you gotta <laughs> you gotta do something. You gotta do something. Like it's not that serious to me, but I do want them to have fun playing sports. Like, yeah, it's, it's a lot that goes you into it. You can't force it. We and now that you're in the space that you're in with me, you get to see. You can't force it. No, you, can, you got. Got other kids playing. Nah, you like that was one back. of the biggest things that you told me even before I came out was like you can't micromanage these kids, mm -hmm. and it's the same thing in the as in the big leagues. Guys are very intelligent, but like my best coaches were the best uh, motivational speakers. Mm -hmm. You know, they get you prepared for two hundred games. Mm -hmm. Like that's the that's the thing. You can be all analytical, but if you can keep the human element into the game for the kid, then you're gonna be able to get something special yeah. out of them. There's a certain discipline, too, that you see in a lot of, like, athletes that when you grow up that would carry over into a profession, like 100%. professional careers so beautifully. That it's, like, it's so important, the discipline and, like, the respect, the relationships you guys have. I agree. You just nailed it. I mean, that's the biggest thing, like you just said, with the kids, with my kids as well. Like, I just want them to be able to be a, you know, a big leaguer in something. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? That's what it's all about for me, just being a pro in something. It don't have to be baseball, you know. You, doctor, lawyer, turn, whatever yeah. you want to, whatever you want to say. I just wanted to be a professional or something, but I think sports has a big, you know, avenue and roadmap to, to get you into those right I think spots. a lot of people understand sports help with life. Right. Know, yeah. Just help with a lot of things and like, yes, you know, sir. from women to guys, sports, everything is life lessons. I agree. And, and I think you run into the right mentors in that realm, you know, 100%. So I think everyone at some point, at least try it. At least yeah, give it a you shot. Gotta, one you got to play a little bit of sports, man. <laughs> At least one shot. Well, Dom, man, I appreciate you being here. You know, this is a big thing. You're one of my favorite guests on here. You know, we had Mo Vaughn not too long ago. Now I have you. <laughs> so that's pretty awesome. Um, Again, thanks for having me, Nelly. You no, know, I appreciate I'm, you. I hope that I'm welcome anytime. Uh, hopefully I can get on a couple more times. Of course, of course, of course. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, man, I'm always looking forward to uh, yeah. talking, speaking the game. 
you know, talking about life, um, anything to help these young kids, you know, get to the next level and achieve their goals, I'm down with it. I love it, man. I want to say thank you guys. Step Up Podcast is your host Appreciate Nelly out you. here. Shout out to Ali. What's going on? And shout out to Home Team Dom in the building, man. Thanks Big for home having team. Me. Yes, Step sir. up. PG. <laughs> <laughs>